Hello and welcome to the Inside Stylist podcast where we talk all about interiors with interviews with interior stylists, writers and the big names in interiors from brands and PRs to artists and designers. I also catch up with industry experts in the know and get them to share all their knowledge and advice. There's so much to talk about. I'm your host, Emma Morton-Turner, an interior stylist and a writer with a ton of experience. I set up InsideStylist.com so I could share all that interiors love with you. So don't forget to head on over to the website for not only the show notes from today's episode, but for links to interior stylists, writers and assistants profiles and a ton of inspiration. But for now, enjoy the show. Today's guest is all about colour. As part of a family-run paint brand based in Norfolk, they pride themselves on offering an exceptional customer experience in terms of attentive service and hassle-free paint ordering. But what I love about the brand is the incredible choice of not only colours, but the finishes. Their paint is the purest matte I've ever used. I have used this paint. I'm really looking forward to talking all things paint and colour with today's guest, Simon Tilbrook from Fennec and Tilbrook. Hello, Simon. Hello. Did I pronounce Fennec and Tilbrook correctly? You did, spot on. Good, good. Yep. I like that. Always good to start with the <laughs> name right. Um, so I don't really know the backstory of Fennec and Tilbrook at all. So do you want to kind of share with me how you got it started? Because it's family business. So who's, who in the family is still working? Well, we've got um, myself and my lovely wife, Claire, um, who's the wizard in terms of making colours. Then we've got her daughter, Anna, who's a bright spark, and her husband, Dave, who's an excellent chat with a lot of um, operational qualities um, and it's really mainly the four of us now we have a, a couple of other people that come in and help us um, but even on a very good day there's only five or six of us wow. uh, in total um, and the business started um, in 2016 uh, really springing out of the ashes of what was a wonderful business based in Norfolk making really really high quality conservatories out of hard wood with a lot of very skilled people making these wonderful products and they were selling them all around the world um, for considerable amounts of money so that the, the paint product came to life really out of the desire to make something that was going to be the best it could be to put onto these buildings where because they were sort of five or six hundred thousand pounds for a conservatory, the, the cost of the paint was an insignificant uh, factor. So they, they developed a paint product that um, really had no profit motive in mind. They weren't trying to make money out of paint. They just wanted the best product yeah. because these buildings were, were built to last and, and um, they gave them long guarantees. Mm. So, when I became involved in, in, in the sad demise of this business, um, there, there was a lot of mess to sort out. And I was involved in sorting out or helping to sort out the mess that was left when it went into administration. And all the phone calls that we were getting at that time were about paint and, and please, can we still buy this lovely product? Please, please don't. And, and I thought, well, it's, it, it all sounded so wonderful. So after meeting up with Martin Fennick, who, who had worked for this lovely company for 13 years and knew about the paint and kept on in my ear saying how good it was, <laughs> we thought, well, what a tragedy it would be if this lovely product was just discarded and, and all the wonderful pieces of collateral that were left over were just thrown into landfill it would have been a tragedy so at uh, at my own personal expense we we sort of brought this product back to market and I stopped doing what I was doing and soon it became an all-encompassing task to get this wonderful product back to market we had to recreate the quality that had been made in the past which we we did we flew off to Scandinavia and we, we resourced and, and found the, the basic ingredients again and uh, basically brought the product back to market. And, you know, with a few hitches along the way, here we are quite a few years later with, I think, a, a really wonderful product that we're all so proud of. Um, I used to wonder why people were workaholics, but you sort of, <laughs> you sort of can't help it because yeah. you 
you just want to make sure that it's all as it should be. And it's it's not like a job popping in on a Saturday for a couple of hours. You you want to do it. And you know, obviously you want to have fun as well, but it's um, it's all encompassing. And, and it's been a, it's been a wonderful experience. When I look back on my life, I will think this will have been one of the most wonderful things to have done. Sorry, I've rambled on there. No, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm mesmerised. Um, so I, I completely understand running um, Inside Stylist is the same, same as you're saying there. I never switch off. And even when I'm sitting watching TV, I will be literally going, oh, that's a nice wallpaper on that TV yeah. programme. Where's that from? And oh, I like the way they put that together. Yeah. You're always thinking of blog posts or podcast you guests. Or, there's always something. But you have your family around you. So yes. it must be quite hard. Well, is it hard to switch off and not? talk over the ditch you have like a cutoff right we're not sh- we're not working now let's have dinner and relax together we should we we we, <laughs> we sort of don't but but you know we, we can still um have a lot of fun and but yeah we, we do get home and and particularly claire and i will will uh, over a drink before we we eat our meal we'll we'll chat about the you know the thoughts and the ideas and because we're I, i'd like to think we're not arrogant we're, we're constantly looking to improve um constantly trying to make it yeah. better think of ideas think of what would make that better how could we do this um, more efficiently and so we're constantly on it and and Anna particularly she's uh, our main sort of social media instagramming you know and that is a fairly time consuming thing it's I mean beast. I, it's, it's an absolute a beast, beast. <laughs> and, and and people it seems to me have they don't want to wait a couple of minutes or till the next morning for some sort of answer. You've got to be on it. And, yeah. you know, Claire first and then Anna increasingly has been right on the ball with Instagram and other social media channels. That's, I think, helped us enormously yeah. Because, yeah. But because paint is a is a wonderful product. You imagine you can transform your room you know, within a few hours to look completely different and and you can do it yourself. It's, you know, it's, there's quite a lot of skill in painting, but it's not desperately difficult to transform form your room and then go in there in the evening when you've done it. And it just looks, wow, what have we done? What a satisfying thing to do. That's that's very, um, it's quite poignant because we're recording this. I'm in my office now. This is the first time I've done a podcast in my office. I've been doing it the whole way through lockdown in my bedroom because my bedroom's all white and beautiful normally when yeah. I'm in my office I've got bookshelves behind me it's really cluttered I'm quite maximalist and I was on a call with my business mentor um, a couple of weeks ago and I said I'm, in, I'm on here now because my daughter's got my laptop and I need to use my Mac yeah. but um, I hate being in here because it's really heavy it was greys it was very blue greys it was just a very heavy feeling room and I just suddenly realized that I'd been treating it like a dumping ground I never came in here I was either on the sofa at the kitchen yeah. table or in my bedroom yeah. and I was like this is my office I'm lucky enough to have a space so this was on Tuesday I said to her right I'm going to take Thursday and Friday off have a full day run and decorate the whole room and I yeah. literally I emptied it into the hall my family were not yeah. happy but now it's gone from gray and heavy to this really light color and I love being in here now. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want any want to dump anything in here now because I've no. created a really zen place. Or maybe zen yeah. is not the right word for where you work. But no, but it, it feels good. I feel good in there. And it's literally mm. all I've done is paint it. That's all yeah. I've done. Yeah. In, yeah. in essentially a long weekend. Yeah. So it, it's, it's transformative. It's amazing. We had a tiny little film of colour all around the walls, which, you know, even if you bought the most expensive paint in the world, isn't going to cost very much compared to a a painting or a new chair or something yeah it, it's uh, transforming isn't it it's, it's quite good fun to do it it's, as it's well. brilliant and the thing is then you're like right I've done this room I need to do all the rooms now yes. and I just want to make every room feel like this yes yes <laughs> so, it's just it's just the cutting in that's a bit of a drag I always think yeah, hate it hate it yeah um, yeah so I first came across you when um, I know Jackie Hoyt, who's your PR. Yes. And I do mood boards for Inside Stylist. And she said, oh, I've got these great paints. Let me send you a selection. What colour are you looking at? So she just sent some through. And just from uh, what I do is I, um, I tend to either paint the whole of a piece of paper and put all my mood board samples on top of it. Or I do like a swatch. And I do them on watercolour paper so it's all textured. And just mm. from painting that watercolour paper, I was like, mm. oh, this is, it's like custard. Good. It's a thick quality paint. Custard, yeah. but it, oh, that's a compliment. No, that is a compliment. But yeah. the 
texture of it is beautiful. It's like, yeah. it's beautifully matte in a, oh, it's just gorgeous, really, yes. really gorgeous. So I really do love the way that paint just goes on, the way yes. it feels. Um, so it was Anna, you said, does the colours for you. Well, Claire, Claire will, will create the colours or all, all all by Anna and Claire are the main colour people. So if you ask me about colour advice, I, I will be fairly limited. But Anna and Claire have got an eye for colour and Claire particularly is the one that will make the colour. If somebody mm. says, oh, I'd like, I'd like this, my colour to look like this. And she will then make little samples and put little bits of colour in, shake them up, paint them out, let them dry. And then, oh, I need a bit more of this in. So she'll do the whole thing again until she's got it right so she's got a very somehow she knows what uh what what sort of of the of the actual colorants are in a color god knows how i can't you know something she'll say that's got a blue tinge and i haven't got <laughs> i haven't got the slightest idea you sound but, like my husband and i i'm like well yeah. that's a gray blue or that's a blue yeah gray. yeah and he's just like yeah. no it's green that, don't <laughs> care you know she uh she obviously does she have a background in? No, she's in always art, no, or? no, no, not, not, not really. She's just got an eye for it and has learnt a lot over the years in 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 doing it. And but she's quite analytical, so she will. There's a lot of sort of maths behind yeah, I was it. Say, it's science almost. It's like a little bit, yeah, bit quite a bit it. of science to it, and um, knowing how much of something to put in and and how much that will change the colour. Mm. It's quite mathematical. She'll have a pad and working it out, and you know in a mathematical way before she then puts it into the system and then dispenses the colorant into a base yeah it makes sense because it's like baking if you don't write down those exact measurements you never yeah. have to recreate it so no it no that's right no so how do you she the team come up with new colors yeah, I, I think there's probably two things. Uh, customers are asking us, they're giving us something uh, like a piece of material, say like like that. Yeah. And and they will say, I need a colour that will complement that. So then we'll make a colour or Claire will make a colour and then we'll think, oh, that's a nice colour. We'll we'll get a name for that colour we'll, by liaising with the customer and we'll call it something like Silverly House or something or whatever they, they choose. Yeah with us and then we'll maybe put it on our website so oh, that, that really happens lovely. quite a lot yeah all Anna and Claire particularly will notice there's perhaps a gap in our range for um, some sort of dirty green color that, that's sort of missing and uh, then Claire will go to work and create something which they'll look at together and then they'll think right we're happy with that let's we'll put that on the website and I think it helps because we only make paint to order so we haven't got to make a thousand liters and put it into various sizes of tins and make it in all the different finishes. We haven't got to make more than a liter to have a color that we're comfortable mm. about making again. So we haven't got to commit like some of the big companies to yeah. making massive, massive amounts of it and then putting it into tins and storing it in, you know, in a shop, hoping that someone will buy it. That's, that's really interesting. I didn't realise you made to order. That is something that's coming up quite a lot at the moment. I interviewed um, a bedding company a couple of weeks ago and she makes to order as well. And that's literally yeah. showing up to the duvet sets and things. So it just yeah. makes a lot of sense. And from an eco point of view as well, yeah, you're not there's no, doing there's no waste. waste. No, there's yeah. no, there's no waste. Because if you make a lot of paint and you, and you put it on somebody's shelf and then it hasn't sold for a couple of years, it's, it's you know, it's not much good. And, and you don't want to buy a tin that's, maybe sat there for two or three years mm. but you'd, you'd rather buy something that was fresh so a lot of these big companies have to then take back the paint they've made and you know do do something with it get yeah. it get it remade into something else and so we don't have to do that which is yeah. which really is great good. yeah really good so that's really interesting that people come to you with the specific colors that's like yeah. a bespoke service that you do I didn't realize yeah. that that's really yeah cool. we do yeah are there themes coming through? People keep asking you from from your. I've got a I've got a set set of words to say at this oh, point. Oh, have because, you? You've been told. <laughs> but, but I've been told what to say, and, and <laughs> Anna has told me. So let me just refer to that. So what what Anna is saying is that we've seen a switch from cool grey whites to warm peach and taupe based whites. Mm -hmm. 
oyster was one of our oh, top colors, which is okay. a lovely, lovely color. Um, but the, the, the more earthy, mid muted colors, uh, again, like wood smoke, are very popular. Um, greens of well, as well have been big sellers, but there, you know, there is still a paint goes and comes. So, so sometimes but our new range, we, we brought back some old colors that had sort of gone by the wayside, which now um, have, have been, you know, well picked up because mm. we've sort of put them on our new color card and um, people have seen them and thought, wow, that's a great color, but it's not, a, it's not a new one. It will be an old one that's brought back because we thought it had sort of gone by the wayside, if you like it, yeah. it missed, missed its opportunity. Yeah, I think the pandemic has had a quite a large impact on how people are decorating their homes and how they want them to feel and that whole kind of going back to nature. So all the colours you're talking about are all the themes that were coming come, that are coming through with colours of the year trends that yes. forecasted. Yes. So those kind of mossy greens and those oyster colours, those those warm colours that make you feel like your home is feel really good. Angry, but yeah. they, back to nature so that yeah no surprises there good to hear good to hear yes. we're on the right track <laughs> yes. yes do you have a favorite paint color at the moment it's a bit of a standing joke because when I do get involved in a conversation and someone's asking what should I you know I don't yeah. know what and, and Anna's maybe busy or Claire's doing some and I have to sort of give some advice I tend to say Sheringham Beach which is um to me it's just a a colour that if you hold it up against anything, it just looks, it goes with it. So some colours don't go together and look, look like they clash. Can you describe what that colour is? For, for, for it's the, a sort of, well, yeah, no, no, that's a hard, it's sort of a, a warm beigey grey colour. Okay. Um, I mean, if you, if you just held it in the sunshine, it looks quite light. But, but on, it just looks rich and it goes with blues, it goes with greens, it goes with pinker colors it goes with white it it just goes with everything so that's one of my favorite colors it's a great name as well yeah and then there's another um, we painted our own outside of our house in a color called barnacle which is a sort of a oh, just a really strong deep bluey gray color and we were so pleased it's just such a good choice do you pull um, up every time you pull up onto your, onto your drive or in front of your house, you look at it and go, oh, I love it. Yeah, I think so. And I think that's what I, I'm one for bold colours because I think it's like um, you when you get a nice new car, you want people to go, wow, what a nice new car. Like when you go into a room that's been painted, you don't want people not to notice. No. You want people to go, wow, this looks yeah. lovely. You know, rather than just go, oh, it's just off white again you know so it's the same I haven't really noticed it I I think color needs to be noticed in a in a room so I I tend to go for bold yeah. we painted our hallway in a color called Marrakesh because last Christmas we had a uh, little holiday in um, Morocco and the color of Morocco gave us the inspiration to make this Marrakesh color and um so you walk in our hallway, it's this beautiful sort of terracotta orangey colour, which is, you know, which is great. It's it's just the opposite to dull. Yes. Uh, so, so do you, I'd imagine, see, I have this problem. I see so many um, wallpapers and fabrics. I'm always wanting to redo my home because I keep seeing something new that I love. Do you yeah. always want to use the new colours that come out? Do you want to redecorate your own home all the time? Yeah, well, I mean, we have done. We have done. We don't get a great deal of time, but we're over lockdown. We had the others. There were weekends where we just couldn't do anything, so we did yeah. do some. And I've I've never really personally until this year fancied painting. I always thought I was fairly rubbish at it, and I am fairly rubbish at it. But <laughs> we. Um, we did it and and you and at the end of the day you look at it and you're just so satisfied with your day you know it really is it gives you a good chance to tidy up the room and yeah. get rid of all Deep the cobwebs butter. from behind the cupboards <laughs> and stuff but yeah. you you do that and then you put it all back because it's all done and ready there's no smell or anything in the room you just put it all yeah. back together and there you are it's done and really quite enjoyable that I mean I wouldn't really want to do it every day but <laughs> quite hard work it's more yeah. than removing all the furniture and all the books and all the bits yeah of it. it's the hard yeah. work and the and the in my office the moment I take anything out of here it's everywhere in the house so it's really like obstructive to everyone else but if you've got yeah. another room you can put it in it's not so yeah. tough 
Yeah. Um, you just touched on the smell. Do you want to talk about kind of the VOCs and the quality? Yeah. The yeah. Uh, our, 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 as I say, we, we strive to make the best possible paint we can make. That's that's easy to apply and durable because paint lasting a long time is, a, is in my view, quite a environmentally friendly thing. Not having to do it every few years because it will stand the test of time is a good thing. Um, obviously, so we keep uh, the ingredients of the of the paint uh, have a very low VOC, so very low smell. Yeah. For paint to last a long time, it has to contain certain things that you yes. wouldn't ideally want to, you know, put into a product or or drink, for instance. Yeah. It does have to have polymers and things that are in the paint that will make it last a long time, because. I mean, paint can be made from pig's blood, you know, which you can paint on your wall, but after a little while, it would fade and look utterly awful, but it'd be very environmentally friendly. Mm. Um, so we we try and make it as, as green as we can, bearing in mind people want to apply it easily, uh, dry fairly quickly and last a long time. Yeah. And I think we're the, we're, we're the same as the other sort of brands in that respect. Yeah, very much so. A little dicky bird told me that you oh. have a new paint chip colour card coming out. Can you tell me about that? Well, that this is most exciting. I can, it is so exciting. We, because we started off, we, we had a limited amount of resources and money. We didn't have a someone with a million pounds sort of sitting behind us to get all these beautiful things done in the early days. We had to do them all ourselves with, yeah. we sprayed things, we painted things, we rolled things out, we chopped them up with little hand guillotines. And we, cause we couldn't afford a proper paint chip color card like the big boys have got. Yeah. So we had to find ways we made sample pots were, were, were relatively easy to make, but then people wanted to see what the colors were. We had a nicely printed color card, but there were limitations to the, you know, to, to the to what the printing process could show. Yeah. So we we invented these little painted sheets, which people can order, which is the actual paint painted out onto a piece of card. And then we thought, well, when we used to get people's color cards, we'd often find ourselves cutting them up and taking away the white background. And, and, and so we invented something called our inspiration box, which is a little mini fan deck of sheets that had been painted and chopped up business card size. And that was a sort of a fairly unique product, an inspiration box. It was for people to buy and get inspiration by looking at all of these colors on a fan. So we were mass producing these sheets in-house by first of all, spraying and then rollering and then painting and then rollering again, but it was massively time consuming. Mm. But when you think there's a 150 colors or and many more of yeah. special colors, it was a huge undertaking. So we found a way of putting the actual paint onto, uh, onto the right material uh, on fairly large sheets in a beautiful smooth way that we could be much more quickly done. So once we achieved that, we then could move on and have a proper little paint chip color card made because the hardest thing with one of those is to get the consistent little chips of color um, without them look without them being wrong so once we'd achieved that then we progressed into getting a beautiful color card done which is actually a palette of them arrived yesterday really? so they and they look so good we, we, we've had masses of debates about how we should take them to market because we do a, a nicely printed colour card, which we give away free. So with this one, because it's been such an investment, we're going to charge for them a little, not even enough to cover the cost, but mm. just so people don't get loose with them and, and you know, grab handfuls of them and order yeah. them every week because their kids have cut them up. You know, we want them to be something that people actually have to buy because i always thought that if if something's free it has no value yeah. because you can always lose it and just get another one so we feel with it's more honest as well because there is a cost to it and 
if we don't charge for it, we have to lose that cost somewhere. And, and we don't want to make the paint any, you know, we don't want to devalue the paint or even add the add money onto the paint mm. to cover it. We'd rather say this is going to cost you four quid or something. And we don't think that's going to it's going to be a problem. Well, we hope. Yeah. So how many colours are on the chart? 150 oh so practically everything yeah pretty well our, well our main our main range we we're, every week we probably have another color so we can't ever keep up with having everything on a produced card no. like that but but our range of 150 colors is pretty good there's, mm. there's pretty well everything there you know it's never quite the perfect color for somebody but the, yeah, the damn good selection. When I'm choosing a colour for a room scheme or for a mood board I'm doing, having the real colour there to match to a fabric or a wallpaper or something yeah. is really, really useful. So I think that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, you've kind of touched on it, but when people come to you and they're a bit overwhelmed and they don't know which way to turn, it's quite a difficult thing to, to advise someone on how to choose a colour because well, you have probably haven't seen their, the room that they're decorating and you don't yeah. know the person very well. How do you advise people? Is that yeah, it well, like a difficult thing to do? I think, I think well, Anna and Claire are very good at that. They'll, they'll, first of all, they'll listen a lot and, and sort of say, well, what, what do you like? Well, what's, what else is in your room? What, because of colour is a very much a personal choice. Yeah. So I think they, first of all, listen and then, and then propose some ideas. And I think some people who are unsure, if somebody who's a bit more confident about what goes well with, with what, um, can propose some ideas, that, that's an enormous help. We often find that they, they won't then choose something completely different if Anna or Claire has advised them that these are the, because once we listen to them first and they tell us what they like, we, we sort of know what goes with what and- yeah. You know, you get a feeling for people whether they're a bit bold or a little bit um, conservative with their choices. So you you sort of help them in that way. The other thing that, again, Anna and Claire have done, if they put our colours into trios, we call them. So there's there's three colours together yeah. on our colour card and on our new colour card that they're in a nice little group already. So if you're choosing one, you just look nearby and there's some contrasting colours or colours that complement the one that you've chosen, which is a great help. It helps me because I can then look at that and say, yeah. well, why don't you look at this colour if you like that one? So that's, yeah, that's been a good thing. Yeah, a out. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. I never think of people phoning a paint company and saying, I'm stuck on a colour or I've got this, can you match it? It didn't occur to me that that was something that could be done. <laughs> So that's really interesting to, to hear, hear you talking about that. It, Very it, good. Good, it, good service. It, it, is, it is good service. It is, it's quite, you know, we've got to manage that situation as well as because it's quite time consuming mm. to be um, on the phone for a long time. Anna will offer a, a proper bespoke colour uh, consultancy service, which she'll charge for. Mm. But for five or ten minutes on the phone, it's, you know, we tend to just go, oh, well, you know, hopefully they'll buy hundred quids worth of paint it won't be yeah. so bad um and be but, fans for life i should imagine well ho yeah hopefully we, we you know we do you know we it's such a wonderful business because we keep building and building and building and people that use us love it mm. and and so they tell their friends and then they'll use it again and then their friends will use it so i just think having a really really top quality product is the winner it's got to be the winner it's because yeah you can obviously go and buy cheaper stuff and you can make houses look quite nice with cheaper paint but it's it's having this stuff that the trade like and it looks so good and strong when it's on mm. the wall and lasts a long time it's just it's just the formula i think that we've got it we've got it right it, it's just managing the growth so we don't we don't grow too quickly or get mm. too greedy or just just make sure that we can always fulfill the order and, and the level of service that we've become sort of known for yeah you mustn't grow too quickly that's interesting i think you have a collaboration coming up with a former podcast guest do you want to <laughs> are you allowed to talk about that or is it secret squirrel stuff i i am this, this is um we've got a, a lovely um collaboration which anna anna again is mainly working on with the, the lovely brand of uh, called flock 
um, who, who are sort of making wonderfully bright and vibrant textiles. And again, Claire will, is, has been the one creating these sort of crazy colors, really. They're, they're not, you know, they're, they're, they're nicely different from other colors that we've got. They're not yeah. just, oh, let's just put a bit more yellow in that one. They're quite different because they're to go with some of her her textiles and yeah we're working on how we can sort of work together it's, it's quite complicated mm. because we've obviously got our own format for doing things and um flock want to have their own style of things so we're sort of working closely with them and and developing this range of colors which which they're going to promote through their own channels um but you know it's it, a collaboration like this has got to work for both parties. We, we want to sell more paint and and Flock want to have another string to their bow in terms of what they're offering their customers. So that's why it will work because yeah. both parties are interested in getting it to work. It's nobody's trying to make a fast buck from each other. You know, it's mm. sort of this is why right from the beginning, we we have this relationship with people that we call partners. You know, I think our supply chain, I'd look at them as partners to us and our business customers are partners that we you know we're working with them, not, you know, just um, customer supplier. You know, it's much more of a joined up thing. Yeah. I think that's that's the way to be. Yeah. Because there's, there, there's, there's no success if it's not win win. It's no. got to be we both got to benefit from the relationship. Yeah. I think it's a really clever thing to do for on both parts because um, I know Flock, I know Jenny. Yeah. Um, and her designs are, re her whole ethos of her business is really lovely. She helps um, textile designers get their product out to market. Yeah. And the designs are really unusual. They're not things you've seen anywhere before. So to match it and have wallpaper and fabric with paints that match perfectly is, is good. Brilliant. So when yeah. is that going to be launching? Is that later in the year? Yeah, I think within, a, within I mean, the colours are, pretty well made i mean there's been a bit with backwards and forwards and i think the colors are, are pretty well there now and and then it's a matter of working out how we've got this wonderful new website which is being developed which is going to be oh, just again it's another so exciting to see how clever it's going to be um so that's something that we're working out how we're going to have that little section there's, there's going to be a little door on the website that will take you to you know this this particular yeah, range but cute. we're working out the sort of technicalities of that at the moment so exciting times yeah very good mm. well, it's been really lovely to talk with you um so i was going to say what's next but i think you've just told me what's next i think yeah i don't think there's anything sort of transforming you know massive it's just very nice website launching the paint chip color card growing slowly steadily We've got um, some what we call concession partners who have got the equipment in in house to make paint. So they've got machinery and they'll buy bases from us and then they can a customer can come in and walk out with a tin of paint. So we've yeah. got one in Prague. We've oh. got one in Suffolk and we, we're talking to some people in Southern Ireland. So we may be like to have another five or six of those sorts yeah. of relationships which will yeah. spread us out a little bit um so that that's something but it's nothing's going to happen dramatically or rapidly it's just going to be slow and steady and and controlled yeah i think a website a new color paint card it's quite and a collaboration is quite a lot <laughs> it is it is yeah. it is i haven't mentioned people can go to fennec and tilbrook and spell out fully uh, dot com if they want to go and look at your paints and find out more yeah. about you yeah. um and if they want to follow you on instagram it's fennec and tilbrook spelt out fully as well so you should go check yeah. out their instagram post so you can see those gorgeous colors yeah, um, yeah. thank you so much for your time it's pleasure been really lovely to talk to you i'm very it's excited fun. about everything that's happening and <laughs> as and when i see them all coming through because i'm sure jackie will share them i will definitely let everybody know that that's thank you thank, thank you very you. much been nice really to talk fun. to you you too thank you bye. bye bye thanks for listening to the inside stylist podcast you can find all the details from today's episode over in the show notes on insidestylist.com if you enjoyed the show, I'd love it if you would head on over to iTunes and rate and review it. It's the best way to help other people find the show and I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, 
Bye for now.